the following announcement has been paid for by Perched on the Top Rope. Welcome everyone to Perched on the Top Rope. And as you heard from that show opener, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ecstatic because she was a former co-host of Perched on the Top Rope. She is now professional wrestler, Izzy Moreno. Izzy, how are you today? I'm doing so good. How are you? I'm like legit so excited to be back on the show. This is awesome. Yeah, I am doing great. It's been uh, quite a few years, so there's quite a bit to catching up to do. Uh, I, I've I've followed you. I, I've watched everything from um, going to wrestling training, jujitsu skipping ahead to being a senior this year which is like wow um (laughs) how has life been for you since you know being the former kid sitting front row to nxt to now you know instead of bailey slapping the the armband on you you're giving your towel away to fans so how how has it been Oh man, I feel like definitely as of recently, you know, life has been so insane and kind of surreal. Um, you know, a lot of people, they do know me as the kid sitting front row at NXT, but you know, after that, you know, a goal for me was to really just keep my name out there and sort of be relevant. So that's where, you know, I went into the broadcasting side of things. So I started a show called The Hot Stag with Izzy, um, where, you know, I would do media and I'd interview people. But for the longest time, I just really had this desire to be inside the ring because that's always been like my number one goal is is to be a professional wrestler. And last year, I really started to think about it and, you know, kind of plan everything out. I was like silently plotting. It's just like, it was funny because like, Behind the scenes, I was plotting out so much that nobody saw. Um, so when the time came, it was, you know, it was really awesome. So for those who don't know, I just had my debut match. It was on August 12th in Mission Pro Wrestling's Boiling Point. I uh, went face-to-face with Jasmine Allure. Um, I did lose my first match, but, you know, it's I'm really happy that it happened because now I can say I'm officially a professional wrestler. Yeah, and I was actually going to bring that up because I watched that debut match of yours, and I'm not going to lie, it it was really cool to see you from that front row as a fan to now being in the ring, but flatliners, the sparks fly with the crossbody, <laughs> the Izzy bar, fans don't get to like know this side of pro wrestling, so like... For you in training, what was it like to, you know, come up with, you know, your moveset that you were going to have for in the ring? Yeah, so when I was coming up with my moveset, I really was like, okay, what is stuff that Izzy Moreno would want to do? And, you know, Izzy Moreno, she's literally a super fan. She's a huge fan of professional wrestling, but she wants to do basically all the cool moves. Um, So that's why, like, you know... I watch, I do a lot of match studies. So if I saw something while I was watching something, I'd like screen record it, send it to my coach. Um, and then also my coach, Coach Marvel, Chris Marvel, who owns the hybrid school of wrestling, he has showed me so much stuff. Like um, he just, he told, he knows that my finisher is the Izzy bar. And he was like, listen, I have a ton of ways that you can get into it. And I was like, okay, show me it. And like, we, there was one night he showed me like five different ways. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is so cool. Um, but coming, actually coming up with the names was a lot of fun because, you know, I, you know, I, I always try to like really try to be almost like a mastermind um, with this type of stuff and like really like think about what my character would want her moveset to be called. So, the Izzy bar, I think, for me, was kind of like, 
oh, it's really cute, but also like, it's kind of like fish. Like I feel like as a kid, and so that's where that came from. And actually, years ago when I met Ronda Rousey, um. I told her, I was like, hey, I always do your arm bar in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And she was like, well, it should be your arm bar. And from then, like, after that, I was like, yeah. I was like, it's going to be my arm bar. So that's where the Izzy bar came in. And then the Sparks Fly crossbody. Um, Sparks Fly is actually a Taylor Swift song. And somebody was like, why don't you use Sparks Fly? One of the guys at Hybrid, Casey Blackrose. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh, my God. Because I wanted a Taylor Swift song to be the name to one of my move so i thought spark slides was perfect especially jumping off the middle rope <laughs> yeah uh, that's really cool that's really cool um the first time i remember when i interviewed you i was actually with ringside news and i had asked you a question and i remember mm -hmm. your dad had to take the phone because uh you started to cry so i'm hoping this next question doesn't do that um we got to hear and see, uh -oh. uh, yeah, we got to see and hear uh, <laughs> encouraging words from Bally, WWE Hall of Famer, Alundra Blaze, everybody from uh, Busted Open, Dave LaGreca, Bully Ray, Tommy Dreamer, and, and many others uh, before, you know, you having your debut match. So I'm kind of curious. I know your parents are your biggest fans and your biggest supporters, what words of encouragement did they have for you before your first match? Um, so actually the number one thing that my parents, specifically my dad kept on saying to me, like right before the match, they were like, don't look at us during the entrance. And I was like, why? And they were like, you're just, you're just going to start crying more. Cause they knew I was going to cry in my entrance like that was like a give me like that was so given that I was gonna like cry and so I did make the mistake of looking at my parents and I cried even more you can see it in my entrance when I'm on one of the ropes um but as just of encouragement you know my it's funny because like my, my mom she was like no matter what we're proud of you you're gonna do so good like legit but really my dad because he's like he's kind of like my coach Coach. he's like everything to me he's like my coach my chef my uber driver my he's my cameraman like he was everything so he's really like everything behind the scenes for me from when I struggled when I thrived like all of this so like for him this was like this is a big deal and it was kind of like me going out and flying out on my own um so I think for him I remember he was like you know what on Saturday just fall out he was like this is eight years just just fall out. And I know there was more said that's, you know, kind of personal, but it was, you know, with the, I, I could tell how excited they are. And I actually have a picture of them during my entrance ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, um, you know, it, it's great. You have such a strong support system from your parents. I remember really, you know, when you were younger, because you were always in in the front row or, you know, always seen in the crowd at NXT. And then um, I am, I'm friends with your mom on Facebook and, you know, follow you guys on social media and stuff, you know, to be able to watch, you know, through uh, everything you did with jujitsu and everything. Um, was there ever a point or do you ever think there's going to be a point that uh, you will let uh, more moves involving that training, your jujitsu training in, in your pro wrestling moveset? Yeah, I think, you know, since I, you know, I've only had two matches so far. So I think there's a lot that people are still going to see from me. Um, so yeah, like I, there's definitely the chance to involve more in Brazilian jujitsu. You know, there's a lot of stuff I haven't even used yet. Um, and just since I've gotten back to Brazilian jujitsu, because I took, time off since I was in Texas training for my debut match since I've been back at on the mat I've learned so much already and like some really cool stuff that I don't want to give away yet but I have <laughs> I have some videos of it and it's really but yeah you know I think for me like 
it's something so unexpected. And I think Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has been such a special factor about my journey. Because for me, you know, I turned to the MMA slash Jiu Jitsu world because Nobody really accepted me into pro wrestling when I started to train when I was like 10 years old. So I was like, okay, if they don't want me to do that, then why not try this out? And actually it's been like a huge plus for me because I've learned so much. I've gotten way better in the ring and just my confidence has skyrocketed. And it's something I truly love. And, you know, I've been able to meet so many amazing people, like my current coach in Jiu Jitsu, Coach Ricky, um, who's literally like, He's like my third dad. I have my actual dad, Coach Marvel, who's my pro wrestling dad, and then Coach Ricky, who's my jiu-jitsu dad. Um, but yeah, jiu-jitsu has been such an amazing part of my journey. And so, you know, when I was coming up with my move set, like I had to like pay homage to it in some way. So there's like little things that you'll see me do inside the ring that's like very jiu-jitsu related, you know, some stuff that I would do on the mats. And it's like my little wink to jiu-jitsu. Awesome. And earlier you brought up that um while you know training wrestling, setting up your moves that you would you would watch uh matches and stuff and like screenshot and, and record uh moves that you saw. Who are some of the wrestlers that, that you took from? Um so I'm trying to think who were some of the people I watched a lot. I watched a lot of Thea Hale. Um, I'm a really, really big fan of her. I watched a lot of AJ Lee, Paige, um, definitely Bailey. I watched a lot of Bailey just to kind of see like her mannerisms in the ring. Um, and especially like on the entrance, I watched a lot because that was something that really helped me. Cause I was like, I really want to be super energetic like Bailey. And I was like, but I want to be like like her I want to have her energy, but like really turns up to a thousand. Like, I want to be, like, bigger and, like, larger than life. So that's, like, that's kind of where I got that from. Um, but, yeah, those are, like, the those are the people that are coming at the top of my head right now. But I did do, like, a lot of match study because I would get to hybrid super early in the day. Like, I'd be there from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. sometimes. So I, you know, you know, I'd train in the ring. And then I'd, like, take a lunch break. And then i just, like, match study. And it was, and it was you know, it was perfect for me because, you know, there was stuff that I would literally screen record in the afternoon and then later that night I'd learn it in like 10 minutes. Oh, awesome. And um, after your debut match, how was the locker room when you got to the back? Um, did any wrestlers give you any sort of advice? Did you ask anyone for any advice? Yeah, so honestly, like, when I got backstage, it was super emotional and honestly chaotic because, like, there was, like, so much happening. Like, you know, it's, like, I loved the locker room at Mission Pro. Like, honestly, I think, like, I remember my first show there, which was in June for True Colors. Like, literally, there were girls who I never met before, and they came up to me and gave me a hug. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, everybody's so nice here. And, you know, I'm, like, such – I'm, like, legit such a big fan of everybody there. So I was like, man, I'm, like, one of the girls now. This is really cool. Um, so when I got back, um, I know I remember Queen Uju, Shay Carmichael, and there was, like, a couple other people around, and they all hugged me. And they're like, congrats, you did so good. Um, and then my parents were back there right away and they captured a moment between me and my parents after, and then my coach was there and I'm sorry to expose my coach here, but he was crying, which made me cry even more. And then one of the guys, Casey Blackrose, who I mentioned before, he's kind of like really, really helped me, um, throughout my journey towards my match. Uh, he was also crying. So it was really awesome just to share that moment with everybody. I did get a lot of advice like the following day because you know after that it was just kind of like like settling down you know making sure everybody was good and everything you know I had to do my post-match promo um so yeah I was kind of just settling down but the following day I did get a lot of advice from you know commentators people who I know my coaches you know we kind of reviewed everything but yeah I definitely got advice <laughs> awesome and um one thing you'd brought up was, you know, learning the, you know, commentary side. And I, I know you had done that in school as well. Have um, you thought about further <laughs> going further in the industry, like outside of being in the ring, like maybe being a referee, 
being on commentary, like even if it's like a special, you know, special guest referee, you know, being a special guest commentator, things like that. Yeah, you know, I I would love the opportunity, but I think for me, I think for years, like I was always on the sideline. You know, I did everything in the pro wrestling industry than be a professional wrestler. You know, I was a manager. I did the broadcasting side. I did commentating. I was the timekeeper, and and I love those opportunities. But I think for me, like it was hard watching people, you know, do what you really want to do, and you can be, and you know, I'd say to myself like. I know I can do it. It's just like, I just have to wait. And so, you know, I think like when I had my debut match, I'm like, I don't want to do anything else. Like, this is it. The Like, I can't even describe, and I always say this, but I can't describe how I feel whenever I, you know, step out behind the curtain. Like, honestly, that emotion and that feeling is so hard to describe and so hard to replicate. And I was, and honestly, I wasn't sure if I would feel the same way in my second match, but I honestly, like, I got choked up again, and I was like, I need to, like, calm down, because if we're going to do a lot of matches, we can't get choked up all the time. But literally, like, I can't describe the feeling of being inside the ring and, you know, the crowd around you. Like, it's just, it's such a special feeling. So, you know, if the opportunity ever came for me to be a special guest referee, I'd take it. But as of right now, I'm really happy being a professional wrestler inside the ring. Awesome. And the main reason why I ask that is because with WWE NXT, you got to be part of the, I don't even know if the show had a name, but I believe it was like WWE kids. Um, yeah. Back, you know, there was, there was a, uh, they had kids doing other people's positions. So like on commentary backstage, uh, personality, special guest referee, things like that. Mm-hmm. And you got to be part of the show, but WWE never put the show out there. So could you tell us some of the things that you, you did when, you know, they were filming for that? Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, you know, I did the audition and I got it, which was really awesome. Um, and the day we filmed it, like, the, I think it was the one day we filmed it. We did a lot of back, like backstage segments. So, like, I think... You know, I remember there was one, it was Becky Lynch was trying to tell us like jokes, but like all the kids didn't find it funny. Um, and then I remember right before they were going to film like NXT, they had matches. And then my job was to interview the big show after his match, um, which I was like really nervous about. And it's funny because, you know, I like, you know, I couldn't reach him. So I was like jumping up and then he picked me up and put me up on the set on the turnbuckle. Um, but yeah, that was, it was fun looking back. I was, I don't know why, but I always forget about that, but I, it's honestly so funny. Cause like for years I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to be in NXT one day. And I feel like I got a really good glimpse of what it's like to be in NXT. You know, I saw like everybody going over their matches and, you know, I, I got directions pulled to me from triple H, which was really awesome. I was like, oh, and then like, I stopped to midway and I was like, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. And like everybody stopped and was like, oh, like it was like a cute, like kid moment. But also I remember they like allowed us to do like entrances too. So like right before, you know, right before like they had the matches for us to like for the actual WWE kids show, you know, me and my uh, co-host, we like got to like walk the ramp and like make our entrance and like the crowd was hyped. And I was like, yeah, this is so cool. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like if I ever make it to NXT one day. Oh man, I will. Uh, I'll be sitting here at the Hasbro bar watching. I'll be here watching, <laughs> waiting for that Good. moment. So um, now, did WWE ever give you a reason why the show never came out? Uh no. I unfortunately I didn't get a reason. It was just kind of like. You know, I think the timing of it, um, um, I never got a reason. And, I'm, and, you know, it's unfortunate that it never did happen. But, you know, I'm super grateful for the opportunity and to say, like, like that's something I got to do one day. Or, like, I got to do. But, yeah, I never got a reason. But, hey, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you like the journalistic side of professional wrestling? Because there were a few times, um, and I'd even joked with you on Twitter that, uh, being on the AEW media calls with Tony Khan. 
Yeah, um, I, I loved, you know, that girl who did do the hot tag with Fizzy, I know she loved it a lot. Um, but I think for her, she was always like, no, I'd rather get in the ring. Like, it's cool to be at these media scrums and whatnot and to interview these people, but I'd rather be in the ring. Yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of being in the ring, you actually have some matches coming up. Now, I don't know what you have planned for hashtag it's Izzy's Corner, but let's bring back our old segment and hear what you have for hashtag it's Izzy's Corner. Well, for hashtag it's Izzy's Corner, we got to talk about my upcoming matches, obviously. Um, <laughs> my next one is actually September 22nd at the Hybrid Experiences uh, Wild Side. I'm going to be facing Caliente. Uh, you know, last time me and Caliente met, we were in a intergender tag team match. And, you know, I made the mistake of getting in the ring when I wasn't the legal person. And she did tap out and I won the match, even though I wasn't the legal person. However, she still tapped out and I plan on making her tap out again. And then after that, I have October 21st at Mission for Wrestling Thriller. I'm going to be facing Maya World. Um... This one's a little bit more personal to me because I haven't gotten my my first one in Mission Pro. I definitely plan on doing it, and I want to shock the world. And I know Maya doesn't like when I say that, but I'm going to say it anyways because I am going to shock the world. And by the way, I have a ticket waiting for Mercedes Monet because I know she wants to see me beat Maya World on October 21st. And then after that, I have WrestleCade weekend, which I'm so excited about. Because last time I was at WrestleCade about two years ago, I was just doing meet and greets, and there's a good chance I wrestled this year. So stay tuned for for more news about that. But as of right now, that's all I have announced. I'm going to be announcing more in the coming days, which I'm really excited about. But yeah, I, it's so weird to talk about like myself as a professional wrestler in Izzy's, Izzy's corner when I used to talk about other wrestlers years yeah. ago. <laughs> It, yeah, it is so weird to hear, but it is also so awesome at the same time because I do remember telling your dad, I was like, yes. I know she's only here for a few months. Like, I knew I only had a short time with you be, coming on the show, being a co-host and everything, because I knew and he knew there was much more bigger things in store for you in professional wrestling. And boy were we right and i'm so happy and excited to watch everything that you've done and mercedes monet i was gonna ask about that how does she <laughs> become involved in into this match i saw the tweet and everything uh how uh well first off thank you for the kind words um it's funny because i you know i cut a promo on maya and I was awaiting for a response for about a week, actually. Um, took a little bit to hear from her. Uh, and she put out her response and, you know, it started to make its rounds. And I guess Mercedes Monet saw it and and wrote that she knows what to, what to do on October 21st. And I took it as the perfect opportunity to invite Mercedes to the show. And, you know, I responded because I, you know, I, it's funny because like I heard that Mercedes isn't really up to much these days. So I just thought, you know, since if she's free on October 21st, she should just come to the show and I have a ticket waiting for her so she can see me beat my world and shock the world. Um, but yeah, that's how it, that started. Mercedes just happened to comment on it, um, which was really interesting. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how nice would it be for uh, her to be in the front row and, watching you instead of vice versa maybe you can go up to her and uh make her cry at the event it, it would be interesting no? like i i remember <laughs> that i just listen that's not that's not who izzy moreno is that's that's not who izzy moreno is izzy moreno does not make people cry she makes people cry happy tears not sad tears <laughs> okay happy tears you got it um maybe you'll make her cry because you win your match <laughs> and there'll be tears of joy at Mission Pro. For exactly. That match. Tears that, of joy. <laughs> that, tears of joy. I'll be crying. I mean, it, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there, there, let's be honest, there's a lot of us that have like watched you from, you know, being, you know, the, the young kid 
at the shows to, you know, now seeing you in the ring, like everybody's, it was a, it's a big talk. Yeah. So, and then, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, but I, you know, I was going to say like, it's, it's really awesome because like so many people have been a part of my journey since like day one. And, you know, the fact that they've kind of like stuck around with me, you know, through my, my ups and downs, like it's, I'm so grateful for that. And like, you know, I always get comments and like tweets and, you know, messages like, Hey, like, I remember when you were sitting front row and now you're pro a pro wrestler. Like, that's so awesome. I think it's so cool. Um, and it's so funny because, you know, when I did my gear reveal, I was like, I was really excited for that, but I didn't know how emotional I was going to be after I posted it because a lot of people started to like tweet about it and, you know, like articles were written about it. And, you know, it was funny because like there was this one picture of me as like a kid at NXT and like my daily gear. And then there was the one of me in my gear, like my pro wrestling gear. And I was like, oh my God, it's so crazy. And then, you know, Bailey tweeted about it, which made me even more emotional. <laughs> I started to cry as soon as I saw it. But, you know, just to see everybody's messages and responses, it's been like really awesome. It just, it makes me so happy. So I'm really super grateful to have this platform and the fact that people have just kind of stuck around with me for so many years. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of that platform and social media, where can all the fans find you on social media? Yeah, well, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's Izzy Mania across the board. That's I-T-S-I-Z-Y-M-A-N-I-A. -I -I and then also you can buy my official Pro Wrestling T-shirt, the official Izzy Moreno shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com. And then also, you know, Stay tuned for all my upcoming matches. Like I said, September 22nd at the Hybrid Experience Wild Side. You can get your tickets. It's in the San Antonio, Texas area. And also in San Antonio, Texas is Mission Pro Wrestling Thriller on October 21st when I face my own world. You can get your tickets at missionprowrestling.com or you can catch it on Title Match Network. And then, like I mentioned, there's WrestleCade. So if you guys are going to WrestleCade, you can come meet me and possibly see me wrestle. Is he's going to be anywhere and everywhere folks Izzy I want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show and speak with me today it was an honor to have you on the show again I am so excited to watch you wrestle and watch your career flourish and hopefully get that opportunity to watch you in WWE NXT one day thank you yeah, this is so awesome to do this because, you know, like we used to do this years ago when I was like super little and now we're doing it now. This is really awesome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And, you know, hopefully down the line we can do it again. And uh, hopefully it won't be like a six for year sure. time gap, you know, the next time we do it. But fans, you can find us anywhere and everywhere. You can find us at YouTube at Perched on the Top Rope or YouTube.com slash Perched on the Top Rope. You can find this podcast anywhere and everywhere from Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Podbay, Red Circle, you name it, we're there. And for all of you who have kept us on Chartable in America, Great Britain, Canada, Mexico, Japan, Australia, Germany, and have even taken the number one spot in Indonesia, I'm sorry, Chris Jericho. I'm sorry, Stone Cold Steve Austin, but we have that spot. Thank you, fans. Thank you. You can find us on TikTok at Perched on the Top Rope. You can find us at twitch.tv slash Perched on the Top Rope, where every Sunday, well, every Sunday right now, I'm currently streaming AEW's Fight Forever Stadium Stampede match, because if you like Fortnite, you're going to love that, that match setup. Go play it. Try it out. You can find us also at Twitter at Perched Top Rope, because Perched on the Top Rope is too long. But for threads and Instagram, Perched on the Top Rope podcast was not too long. And make sure you go check us out on Facebook.com slash Perched on the Top Rope for all the news, rumors, and funny memes that we post. And a special guest from my boy Benton here. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Perched on the Top Rope, where remember, spoiler freeze, the way to be. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> <laughs>